how much game development can you get done in one week? That's what I've been wondering for quite a while now because at the end of a week I often wonder did I even make any progress? What did I get done this week? The to-do lists just don't get any smaller and oftentimes at the end of the week the game still looks exactly the same as at the beginning of the week. Or at least that's how it feels. This week we'll run a little experiment. We'll see where the game is at at the beginning of the week and then we'll compare where the game is at at the end of the week. If you're making games then you might know that feeling of falling further and further behind in your way to optimistic timeline. Which I'm not gonna lie can feel quite frustrating and discouraging at times. But is it all real? Do I really make that little progress? Or is it just an illusion? Let's find out! The game I'm working on is called Will You Snail? It's a fast and skill-based action platformer where an AI tries to predict your movement and tries to destroy you. If you want to do me a super big favor, you can wishlist the game on Steam. You are a snail and I am a god. Because that makes sure that you don't miss the launch and it also helps me to stay motivated, helps me to understand how many people are interested in actually playing this game. Your brain is over. So the Steam link to that will obviously be in the description. Now here's where the game was at at the beginning of the week. Last week I already had the time to implement some of the localization features. As you can see you can change the language in the menu here now. And the way this works is I can download this Google Sheet here. Burp, and then I wrote a script that imports that file into Game Maker. Does that mean Will You Snell will be translated into different languages? I don't know. I can't promise anything but... Um, I wanted to make it possible, it's possible now. That rework here was the main task of last week, reworking the AI voice system. Which brings us to where we're now, the beginning of the game. I want to rework the beginning of the game this week. I want to implement a bunch of cool new voice lines and rework the tutorial. Here, that is tutorial text at the moment. I, I want to get rid of that text because there's a better way to do this. A way that fits better to the main selling point of this game, the AI. So ba, 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 ba. let's skip through this a little more quickly. As you can see, there are three rooms at the beginning at, of the game at the moment that Zora teach you the basic movement and those are the ones we're gonna replace. On Monday, I started off the week by going for a quick run. And then after my dance break, I had to worry about an Islanders update for a little bit because we added additional languages and we updated to a new Unity version. So there were a couple of little bugs that had to be fixed and we had to rebuild the game and upload it to Steam. So very soon the game will be available in 11 different languages, which believe it or not actually makes a big impact. Then the Steam discussions needed to be checked real quick. I just want to work on the game as always, but I can't. Same procedure as every week. <laughs> Next up, I wanted to make a thumbnail for Wangelines guest post on my channel. You you might have seen that come out on Monday. High quality guest posts like that are always welcome on my channel by the way. Just wanna put that out there. Of course that entire procedure took a while but for that video it was absolutely worth it. And then I wrote the community announcement for next week's video where I'll check out your game dev channels. You can find that announcement in the community section in case you missed it. Then I went for a little walk in the rain, recorded some footage of my game for this video and then the day was basically already over. LOL. Photon Unity Networking is one word, though, uh, and so it goes by the acronym PUN. Um, there's also UNET, which is Unity Network, Unity Networking. Okay, so if you want to make a multiplayer game with Unity, there are basically those two options, right? Photon and then the Unity option that is called UNET or something like that. Pro or there Yes, but uh, UNET is being deprecated. Uh, Monday evening I talked with Welton who's working on a very impressive online multiplayer game called Under really Pressure at the moment. Like if you're interested in how to develop online multiplayer games in Unity and how to grow a community for that, then watch out for the interview that will go up on this channel sometime soon. Um, do you like water? Is, I do like water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's Tuesday, 9 a.m. Time to get started. Game Maker on one screen and then my voice lines on the other screen. Pretty nice setup for working on voice lines. So I started building the new levels for the opening sequence of the game and also still had to do a couple of improvements and automations for my voice line system. It's 11 a.m. and I coded in some of the tutorial voice lines. This voice line has not been recorded yet. Error. Blah. This voice line has not been recorded yet. Error. Blah, 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 blah. All right, all right, all right, all right. This looks better now, but I'm still not quite happy with the with the architecture here. Like this already started to get very messy for just 
a little bit of simple logic. Later on when this voice line logic gets more and more complicated in other levels, I want a solid system figured out for that. I feel like that's not the way to do it. So after a break I went into full on hacker mode and tried to improve my voice line system even further. I felt like doing that now would save me a lot of time later. I was not making progress as quickly as I wanted to, but hopefully in the end it will pay off. It is 4pm now and all of the voice lines that are marked as green are already implemented into the game. So I implemented a huge bulk of voice lines, which are nice. Now I'll take a break and then when I come back I'll implement all of the remaining tutorial voice lines down here. Here, 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 have a look. Um, unfortunately at the moment it's still a little bit hard to imagine how this will feel in the final game because we only have placeholder voice lines. This voice line has not been recorded yet. Error. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, maybe, maybe I have a couple of minutes to get started with another level. Because in the evening I continued my collab with Welton. We recorded a video for Welton's channel as well, where I let him play the last official version of the game. Oh, so this one has predetermined spikes and yes okay, okay. <laughs> okay and um at the moment the game has automatic difficulty adjustments meaning that when you die a bunch it gets easier which okay. is which is something i'll get rid of in the next version probably and you the player will be able to pick the difficulty her or himself okay Mm. Oh wow, that was that was just that was just me. <laughs> Still a bit sleepy. Okay, let's get the voice lines for this implemented for this level. I feel like the reason why progress can feel a bit slow at times is because you're not really looking at the big picture. You're only looking, what did I accomplish today? What did I accomplish this week? And let's be honest, sometimes what you can accomplish in one day or in one week is just very limited. Because in game development it's often two steps forwards, one step backwards. So where the majority of progress comes from usually is from consistency. From the fact that you have 50 weeks a year. This is really something I'd be interested to know from you. Do you feel productive sometimes even though objectively speaking you're getting a lot done? I find this a very strange phenomenon. Like as a game developer you don't really know how much is enough. Games are never finished, there's always more to do and the further you are into a project the slower things seem to move which is why I think it's so important to know what you're capable of, what you can do in one week so you can plan accordingly and then also do plan accordingly which is something I still haven't mastered yet, I still have to improve at that, because my timeline so far clearly doesn't work out. Well, at least I included a lot of buffer time at the end. Now after a nice and long break, it's already half past one, so I have about 30 minutes to make some more stuff happen in here, implement a couple more voice lines, and then I'll have to start preparing for the interview. Once again, sneak peek now, full video later. Publishing updates for a game is worth it if you're really committed to it and do it for a long time. That's a theory. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it might, it might be worth discussing with the guys, you know, because uh, if mm. Ireland really has uh, sold 250,000 units, it might be worth considering making it into a long-term uh, franchise. I mean, even if you uh, farmed it out to another developer. You know? It's about 5 p.m. and I'm working on these trigger zones here. Let's skip a couple of voice lines. Skip, skip, skip. And you can see I'm debugging these trigger zones down here with a bunch of numbers. There are a lot of debug variables on the screen, which will hopefully help me to figure out a bit better what's going on here. When I fall down here, uh, certain voice lines will be triggered, like this one here. Nope, there's no way. Turn around and take the road at the top. And then when I fall ag down again, it will once again trigger a voice line. And when I stay down here, it will trigger different voice lines. Like this one here. Staying down here is 100% pointless. You're wasting your time down here. Final result of Wednesday, I managed to finish a huge portion of the tutorial. The only thing that was still missing were the voice recordings. This voice line has not been recorded yet. So guess what I did on Thursday? I recorded the voice lines. Today I will hopefully bulk record about 150 voice lines and implement them into the game. Over the course of this project I'll probably record a lot of voice lines, so now that I'm getting started with voice line recordings I want to make sure that that workflow is as efficient as possible. So I'm doing some research for that. I'm currently downloading the new Cubase version over here, because that will allow me to batch export all of my audio files much easier. Apparently there's a new feature for that. 
<laughs> so that's how they got me. <laughs> Spending a bit of money for saving some time, always worth it. In my opinion, if you can afford it, I value my time. So while Cubase 10 was downloading, I started to do some quote unquote voice acting. In fact, you've already been jumping around like a madman. Please be so kind and double jump. Otherwise, there's no purpose to letting you. Otherwise, there's no purpose to letting you proceed. Recording the voice lines didn't take all that long. Installing Cubase did, so I had to kill some downtime. Managed to watch half a GDC talk with my angry face. Of course, I was not angry. I was just waiting. For that stupid man! But the waiting paid off. There's a very cool feature in Cubase that allows you to basically automatically edit your entire audio clip. After that, all I had to do was selecting these snippets and giving them their proper names. Sorry that this turned into a free Cubase advertisement. I'm just sharing what I think is useful. And I'm sure there are a lot of other DAWs that allow you to do this exact same thing as well. Yeah, that's about 130 voice lines right there. After some more technical difficulties, I managed to batch export all of them with just one click. Which feels awesome, especially when you know how long it takes to do all of that manually. And after some more technical difficulties, I'll spare you the details. I managed to finally import them into Game Maker. On Thursday I did another late shift for creating the thumbnail of this video. And then my Friday of course was spent on editing it. So no more time for game development this week. So here's the moment of truth. How much did I get done this week? Before we look at the direct before and after comparison, let's sum it up with I implemented 130 voice lines from ground up, I created 3 new levels and I've put a lot of cool systems into place that will allow me to add voice lines even faster in the future. So all in all not an insane amount of progress, but progress nonetheless. Okay, so here we go, that's how the second level looked at the beginning of the week for example. Just as a little reminder. A little bit empty, a little bit bare bones and also doesn't feel like it has a lot to do with the AI. So I'm gonna show you the new updated version now and if you wanna help me out then feel free to leave some feedback in the comments. This is the beginning of the game. The beginning of the game is obviously very important so any feedback you can give me on that is highly appreciated. Here we go. Hello human, welcome to my simulation. This is the most important and powerful simulation you'll ever be in. I can feel your presence in front of the screen. Uh, oh. You still think this is just a fun little game, right? Uh, uh, that's fine. So, you apparently haven't figured out how to move yet. I guess you're pretty much as dumb as I expected. Just use your keyboard or your gamepad to move around. So now you're moving. You always need someone to tell you what to do in order to get your ass up. Huh? I also want to inform you that you're capable of performing a double jump, but I guess you have figured that out already. You can also vary your jump height by varying how long you keep the jump button pressed. To confirm you've understood, jump as high as possible. Okay, good enough. Now do some low jumps by only tapping the jump button for a tiny moment. Good, I'm glad we have the basics out of the way. Next up I'll have to test your platforming skills so I can pick the correct difficulty level for you. Feel free to play around with the controls a bit more in here. Just leave the level on the right when you're ready to be tested. Okay. This test is quite simple, even you can understand it. When I say go, you must try to reach the end of the level as quickly as possible. Do you understand? You'll have to go as quickly as you can. The door will open in 3, 2, 1, go. Now double jump here. Nope, there's no way to get up from here. Turn around and take the route at the top. Faster, faster, you can get up here, just hold the jump button as long as possible to jump higher and combine that with a double jump precision, please. And you fell down again. Stop falling down here, you dumb dumb. Come on now, show me what you've got. First. Performance ever. Here you go, you'll get the infinitely easy difficulty. If you ask me, I'd say that's quite generous. Ha, <laughs> I love shaming humans for their inferiority. You can change the difficulty at any time from the menu, by the way. 
this is just my personal recommendation for making you feel as dumb as possible. Now go ahead, I want to show you something. Go on now, I won't say anything funny cause I don't want to reward you for wasting my time. one, a superhuman AI and a human walk into a bar. I want to give a big thank you to everybody who has wishlisted the game already, it means a lot. And I guess the message of this video is keep going, keep pushing through, stay consistent, you'll get there. Of course do some clever planning, don't overscope. And yeah, I mean that's it. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, hope you had a good time and I'll see you next week. Oh yeah.